Islamists behead six and shoot none in Mozambique. On September 6th, at least six people were beheaded and an Italian nun was shot and killed in Mozambique's Nampula province. According to reports, Daesh, Daesh has claimed responsibility for the attacks. In June of 2021, here's some background. Due to an escalation of Islamic State-linked insurgencies, the 16-member Southern Africa Development Committee, or uh, SADC for short, approved the deployment of troops into Mozambique. A Telegram channel, which is an encrypted messaging app associated with the group, also issued a statement saying that Sister Maria de Copi went, quote, too far in spreading Christianity, according to Reuters. The insurgency has displaced almost 800,000 people and caused a $20 billion natural gas project to halt entirely. President Felipe uh, Nuyusi said this latest killing spree occurred as insurgents fled from SADC soldiers. The insurgents often attack secu security force posts and convoys, as well as civilian state workers and facilities such as schools and clinics. They also injure, kill, and kidnap residents, especially young children and women. Mass beheadings take place as revenge for re resisting recruitment or assisting the authorities. People are asking in live chat, um, yeah, Daesh is um, ISIS. Daesh is the Arabic for ISIS. By the way, they hate it that you call them that. Which is, uh, they like to be called the Islamic State. They don't like the acronyms. Daesh is also an acronym. Mm, mm. Yeah. But yeah, so um, Forever Storm is saying ISIS has become a cancer that has mass, what? Metastasized. Metastasized all over the world. Yeah, especially in Africa. Like, I don't know if people understand that Daesh is like very, like Daesh, ISIS is very, very active in Africa, like all over. It's crazy. In Mozambique, it's super bad. And then also in the Sahel region, just all throughout the Sahel. It's really bad. Like we've been covering what's been happening on the borders of Uganda and the Congo recently, the DRC, I mean, um, yeah, those are some areas where it's really severe. We've covered, um, some of the extreme violence that happens in Mozambique recent uh, with, within the past few years, there was one attack where I think 115 people were killed really, really horrific stuff. And, um, it's, slightly geopolitical and that a lot of recruiting that happens into this local ISIS group, I, which I think might be called Al-Shabaab locally, um, but I think it's a different Al-Shabaab, I'm not sure, um, happens because Mozambique is supposed to be having this oil project. That, again, it's, uh, excuse me, natural gas, two twenty $20 billion natural gas project. So this country has a lot of resources but people who feel disenfranchised by their inability to gain access to this wealth the nation should be garnering become fertile ground for recruitment, essentially. Or okay. that's what some analysts have said. And before anybody criticizes Susanna saying, how could you be talking about money when people are dying? Money means less people die, especially in Africa, okay? Like not having enough economic resources is literally killing people, okay? Directly responsible for killing people. This is a, an area where it needs funding fast, okay? So this is very, this is, when you talk about money coming into these countries, it is about people's lives. Yeah, that's a really good a point. And also from the sense that fundamentalism thrives the most when material conditions are abysmal. Yes. Uh, there, I mean, there are so many different social studies that show this throughout history and then also comparatively among nations. Communities and nations are more fundamentalist when they have less economic prosperity. And then as you gain economic prosperity, that's when you see economies and nations secularize. Because when you are living hand to mouth, like you cognitively need something a lot greater to help alleviate the mental stress you go through because there are protective psychological factors to having a belief. Like this is just a fact, um, whether or not some atheists like, like to admit it. Um, 
I just see it from the perspective of a psychological utility. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Um, is this the lady that they shot? Mm-hmm. They shot her in the head. Um, I can't like, can you imagine this face and thinking I'm going to shoot that in the face, in the head? Like, look at the hair. Am she had I... been in Mozambique since 1963, gained a Mozambican citizenship. And they think that she was running in between buildings to try to go to the building where the children of the orphanage were hiding when they found her and killed her. But like she, oh okay. But why would you shoot her? Because she like... was, she went too far in spreading Christianity, according to them. Yeah, like you have to be some some high level of evil that you could look at that face and shoot 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 her in the head. I mean, yeah. I'm, maybe I'm being actually. You know what? I'm actually feeling disgusted by myself because if this was a young man, I would be like feeling like they're less like if this was a thirty year old like man, I would be feeling like less like how could you shoot this than this old. No, actually, I I, I get it because like. I, I'm trying. I'm struggling internally because like she looks harmless. You know what I mean? She looks so harmless. So I don't understand like the mindset that wants to shoot that. Actually, but again, internal struggle. Daesh's ideology. She's not harmless. She's actually extremely dangerous. Like she's spreading Christianity. She's like actually worse than a taking away thirty people year after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so she, to to us, she looks like a cute little old lady that is harmless. To a Daesh member, she might be like, actually, a man, an enemy of ours, that is a 30-year-old man with a gun, that he's less harmful than this one lady. He's taking our lives. The, he, this lady is taking people's in, internal chance to um, bliss and happiness. Like, she's mm -hmm. like, yeah, so she, they, they see her as, like, extremely evil. Yeah. But imagine, yeah, I don't know. Is it, you, I don't know. I think it's really important is it to highlight. Internal, do you think there's anything, like, when you point a gun at the face like this and t pull the trigger, do you think that at that last moment there's something internally that might be like, you kind of suck, like, don't, like, stop? Like, do you think there's a force, like, has Daesh brainwashing has managed to kill all that, like, voice completely? Or there's, like, something in them that says, like, this is not right, I shouldn't be doing this. It depends. So honestly, like humans do not like to enact this level of, of harm upon other humans because we're pro-social beings, most of us in our nature, except for the minority that have legitimate antisocial disorders, but that's a minority, right? Yeah. So for people to be able to enact violence, let alone this level of violence upon other people, speaks to a depth of desensitization and exposure to violence that probably most of us can't think of because I actually think that it's not really within the nature of most of us to be able to do something like this like really gnarly stuff has to happen to you to get to this point in my opinion in my understanding of what I've learned in my research of human psychology so you don't um, think, you don't think, like the person that shot this lady in the head do you do you think what are the chances of him going when he's sleeping the day night after or the, the night the night that he did this thinking like some some gross feeling that he what he bad what he did do you think like they just go to sleep no problem maybe even congratulate themselves or they feel achy inside i don't know hmm. i don't know yeah hmm. it's it's really brutal and i think one reason why I wanted to talk about this story is that, you know, even though there are other geopolitical factors that go into stories like this, one, it is obviously religiously motivated because they say that she was spreading Christianity too much. So we can't attribute this to fundamentalist Islam. Mm -hmm. But two, it's always that we need to be, and I have to thank our editor D for this, we need to be paying more attention to these things that are happening in Africa because a lot of people don't realize how active ISIS is in Africa, one. And two, um, Africa is undercovered in general. Okay. And somebody might blame us. Somebody might say, like, oh, all these people, the ISIS. Okay. Here's a criticism to us. Okay. See what you, how you respond. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it on myself. Okay. Um, 
all this a white lady has to die for you to pay attention to Africa. What do you what do you say? What's I mean, say? frankly, that was not what caught my attention. What caught my attention was the six people who were beheaded. Yeah, yeah. Tell there's, there's, um, more, there's more reporting that I was able to find on this one particular victim through Catholic yeah. news agencies and stuff like that. Do you think that we, the reason why there's more reporting on this um, is because the the victim was white? I or think it's maybe... because she was a Catholic. Hmm. And Catholics were others, are extremely were active all... in reporting on stuff like this. Okay, yeah. Were the other six people white? I don't know. I'm going, I'm trying to go woke here. See if I can... <laughs> <laughs> Like maybe the Catholic news agency is like having the pic like where the other six people Catholic as well, but black, and that's why we don't have their picture. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. There, I literally could not find much information at all about the other people who were victims. Maybe because I know that the, the I'm not blaming, by the way, don't feel attacked. Like I'm just, I'm talking about the, okay, so first of all, I'm not attacking you because you're not a journalist. You have to rely on secondary information. You're not on the ground there, right? So if yeah, there's yeah. no picture, there's no picture, right? I'm just wondering if the news outlets out there the reason why we don't have pictures of the other six maybe is because they're black maybe you know maybe this this would be big the biggest highlight i mean that's one way of putting it man yeah. i've personally i think i mean it's maybe this is just my own framing of the that's flawed i think it's probably because they're most likely just like random civilians and villagers versus this Catholic nun has a position within a global organization that can get some spotlight on this. Right. I but, mean, those um, random villagers are probably black, let's be honest. So I don't know. It depends on how you like to look at that kind of thing. Yeah. Anyway, just something to think about. Like I'm trying to include other perspectives here. Not mm -hmm. always like, yeah. you can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese God, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says, get our free blasphemous art.